We welcome South Dakota State student athletes and Coach Nagy to the dais. And we'll uh, make a couple of procedural announcements before we uh, ask Coach for his opening statement. A reminder to raise your hand when you have a question, and we'll send the mic holder your direction. Uh, please wait until the microphone arrives uh, before you ask your question. If you can direct your question to a specific student athlete, uh, that would be helpful. And a reminder that locker rooms are open once the 10-minute cooling off period has expired. So if you need more uh, information from either of these schools, their locker rooms are open. And let's go ahead and take an uh, opening statement from Coach. Really proud of our guys. And um, I mean, you know, we're just so bad offensively in the first half. I thought we really competed in the first half. And the whole game we competed. You know, we, we lose by one on the glass. 11 offensive rebounds, uh, shot the ball obviously better in the second half. We, we uh, scored 52 points in the second half, so we clearly played better offensively. But, you know, Maryland played well too. I thought, you know, they hit timely shots and uh, I, I'm really proud of our kids that they didn't give up. You know, the, if, if I had the final play over, I, I would have called a timeout. Uh, I mean, we, we, we go through these things. We, we knew, we know what play we're running. We knew what to do. Um, but we just, you know, we have personnel in there that we don't normally have in there in those situations. And so, uh, you know, if, if, if looking back on it, I, I would have been way better off for me to call a timeout and make sure we knew what to do. I just, you know, I get in that point and I'm, I worry about them changing defenses or doing something and giving them an opportunity. So if we know what we're supposed to do, um, uh, you know, then we do it. But we just, you know, we, we just had some personnel in there that aren't normally in there. All right, let's direct questions to South Dakota State student athletes, Mike Dom, George Marshall, and DeAndre Parks. Once questions for those three have been exhausted, we'll return to coach. Matt Zimmer, Argus Leader. Uh, DeAndre, is there any uh, you know, consolation in the fact that you guys put together such a spirited comeback here? Um. Like Coach Nagy said, you know, I'm real proud of this team. Um, we didn't give up. When I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people thought the game was over at one point. And um, we kept fighting. And I'm just proud of this team. George, how did you guys uh, get that comeback going? It seemed like early in the second half, Maryland was making so many three-pointers, it looked like it was going to be tough to come back. Uh, you know, we really just buckled down and uh, got a string of stops together. Uh, you know, we were getting stops, and you know, obviously we played a lot better offensively in the second half. Uh, and it was just a combination of those two things that, you know, led to that comeback. Zach Ward, KDLT. DeAndre, uh, it looked like this game was really getting away from you guys, down 18 three times. What were you able to kind of do to, to settle things down that you saw that you were able to settle things down with? We just reminded ourselves what we went through in the summer league tournament, um, you know, to stay focused and just play hard each possession and continue to string together stops. Um, Coach Nagy also reminded us, you know, we've been in this position before and we know what we got to do. And I mean, we almost pulled it off and, you know, it was, it was a tough loss and that's it. More questions for student athletes? Mike, did you guys think you were going to win it? Got it to within five, got it within two, and the crowd started getting into it. Did you think you were going to pull off the comeback? Uh, of course we did. Um, you know, we had that set in our mind. Uh, you know, we can win this game no matter what, you know, no matter who we play. Uh, and we had that set in our mind that uh, we weren't going to go out losing. Uh, just didn't happen. Mike, obviously you lose some great seniors on this team, but you'll be back next year. A lot of these guys will be back. What are you going to take from this as you really proved the, this school's medal and prove that you can compete at this level? Um, well, yeah, we are going to lose great seniors. Uh, the leadership on this team, obviously, was all the seniors. But, uh, you know, with us young guys, we're just going to have to come together um, and work real hard in the offseason next year, and uh, we'll be back at it again. All right, we'll dismiss the three student athletes. And once they've left the stage, we'll return to questions for coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Questions for Coach Nagy. Uh, 
Uh, Scott, what changed for you guys to get be- better offensively in the second half? Did you make adjustments or did you just start making shots? We didn't, we didn't really make any adjustments. Now, we, we took less threes, which was good. Um, we went inside more. I th- you know, and it wasn't <clears> – <throat> we, we talked about it a little bit because I, I thought the three-point shots we got in the first half were good ones. Uh, some of them might have been a little quick, but they were good ones, and we just didn't make them. Uh, but, you know, our guys – the one thing we talked about, we, we didn't shoot a free throw in the first half. Too many threes. We weren't aggressive at all. We were went much more aggressive off the bounce and throwing the ball inside in the second half. And that helped, uh, that helped open up the perimeter, too, and we shot better in the second half. Don Marcus from the Baltimore Sun. Uh, there were two foul calls at the end of – one was at the end of the shot clock and one was Mello driving the lane. Uh, did, did it look to you that those, those calls were – you know, questionable the, in terms of how, how the, the way the game's being called and then to make those calls in those situations? Um, you know, I, I, they, they explained to us uh, from the beginning of the year that they were going to call it tight. And, uh, you know, every coach is going to agree and disagree. And, you know, they, the, those calls certainly weren't why we lost the game. Uh, and so, you know, I – of all the people in that gym, that's the last job I'd want is to be an official, uh, you know, and I think they do a great job. And, and so, you know, I think that, I, I think that we know they're going to call it close. You know, if, if guys are going to come off the screen, keep your hands off of them, you know, and don't count on it just being this time of game. They're not supposed to call a foul. They, they call it the way it's supposed to be called through the whole game. So I, I didn't have any problem with them. Uh, Coach Daniel Martin from CSN in Washington, D.C. Um, when Mello fouled out, I don't think Maryland's been in a situation where Trimble's fouled out this year. In your huddle, we haven't been in the situation where George has fouled out either. So, <laughs> did, did at that point in your huddle, did you feel like you had backed them into a corner and you guys were in a, as good a spot as you could be at that point? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I mean, there wasn't any talk about okay, now he's out, now we have him. So I don't know if there was any any switch that got flipped in, uh, in terms of that. But I think, you know, for them, I mean, they're so used to him having the ball all the time. We're so used to George having the ball all the time. And it's really what cost us not being able to get a shot there at the end of the game. Uh, and that's why I say if I had that back, I, I would have called a timeout just to make sure. But, you know, I, it, it hurts them, no question about it, when he's not in there. I mean, he's a tremendous player. and we, we had a hard time getting him under control off the ball screens. Scott, when you're trailing by 18 three times, did you feel like this team was going to have enough gas to come back? I think it was still in double digits with about eight, seven minutes left. Yeah, I mean, I watched him. I watched him do it twice in our tournament, and you know, that's that's just what we talked about. We've been here. We know we can do it. You know, it's let's face it. It's those weren't Maryland, uh, and we knew it would be a tough task. But the one thing we knew we couldn't do was just keep trading baskets with them. And I. I mean, I couldn't believe. I mean, they hit some tough shots. You know, at the end of shot clocks, and uh, uh, Carter hit hit two tough shots at the end of shot clocks. It really hurt us. One running hook, and uh, you know, I, so you got to tip your hat if they make those shots because I thought our defense was really pretty good tonight. But you know, if you're going to make a comeback, it, it has to start in the defensive end, not the offensive end. And yeah, you have to make shots, which we didn't in the first half. But we, you know, we we scrapped. Our kids did everything they could possibly do to win that basketball game. Coach, uh, in terms of what Jake Lehman gives them, uh, it looked like as long as as long as you guys were sort of concentrating on trying to stop Melo, get Melo yeah. out of the lane, Lehman was going to have that, or, or Nickens were going to have those corner shots most of the day. It, was it a sort of pick your poison kind of well, thing? Well, it or? really is. I mean, let's face it. Uh, I mean, here we are leaving a six nine tremendous shooter. Great body, great athlete. You know, we're having to leave him open because their posts are unbelievable, their point guard's unbelievable. And so, yeah, it is pick your poison. And, and he, you know, he's the one that probably won the game for him. He had, he had some big shots and, and made big plays for him. Scott, I know every time you've made the tournament, you've always referenced back to the players who were there during the 20 loss seasons. What do you think this group will have done for your program going forward, playing this kind of a game? and? And really further amplifying uh, this program on a national stage. Are you talking about the seniors that we have now? The seniors, the team, yes. Yeah, seniors. Well, I mean, we have our work to do. We, uh, you know, I mean, we we've got some some very good young players coming. Uh, but you know, I think I, I still harken back to. Uh, I mean, hopefully, what what George and DeAndre and Keaton uh, and Jake will have done for us is just 
solidify that you know and can if you come here you're gonna have you're, you're gonna have a great opportunity to be successful but you're also going to play with with great teammates uh, and I always tell kids this this is when we recruit them we, here, here's the deal college basketball is tough and if you're not tough don't come here because because it won't work you'll leave you'll end up leaving and we don't want kids to leave and you know kids in division one basketball are transferring at almost a rate of 50 percent uh, we're not interested in that we, we want kids to come and commit and stay and be tough and so the kids that like that message uh you know they'll, they'll be successful at south dakota state but these these four seniors have been that for us and and uh, they've, they've committed to our program. They've given us everything we talked about after the game, the, that this is what living feels like. You know, that it's, it's what I talked about last year. When you put your heart into something, sometimes it's, a, it's so exhilarating that, that you, you can't believe it like it was a week ago. And when you put your heart into it, it's, it's heartbreaking sometimes like it is today. That's just the way it is. There's no in-between. There's no in-between when you really want to live. And, and these guys are feeling that today. All right. Thank you, Coach. Yep. We'll begin with, uh, by welcoming Marilyn to the dais. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach and then direct questions to student athletes. Coach? Uh, well, I'm proud of our guys. It's, it's hard to win in this tournament. And um, I thought for 36 minutes we were, we were really good and um, had 11-point lead, and they hit back-to-back threes, and everything changed. And that, that happens in this tournament. Um, but in the end, we... we do what we had to do. We haven't been in foul trouble like that all year. That was, we had to play some funny lineups. And um, as soon as we got it going, playing inside out, uh, we got in foul trouble and couldn't do that. So um, we, we had to manufacture some things. But down the stretch, we were just good enough defensively. Had, had a couple silly fouls. But we stepped up and made free throws. And um, just really proud of the guys that um, they're advancing and, and beat a really good team that wouldn't quit and made some big free throws and big shots down the stretch. All right, we welcome Robert Carter, Jake Lehman, and Mello Trimble to the stage. And if you direct questions to a specific student athlete, we'd appreciate it. Questions for student athletes. For Jake and for, um, for Robert, uh, what was it like the last minute with, uh, with number two on the bench? And for Mello, what was it? that last minute like for you? Um, you know, it, it was tough having him on, on the uh, bench. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our guys to, to step up like that and make free throws. I'm just proud of um, our guys because um, a, a lot of us was in foul trouble, so they stepped up and played big. Jalen made big free throw at the end, and uh, Jake played really well to help our team get this victory. Uh, it was tough to, to be on the bench at the end of the game. Um, I normally like to shoot the last three throws to, you know, to end the game. But I mean, I, I trusted Jake and Rasheed and the rest of the guys that was on the floor to, to end the game. And uh, Jake really stepped up at the end and made his free throw. And so did Jalen. Yeah, question for Jake. Um, can you take me through the uh, last possession? What happened there and defensively? 
how were you guys able to kind of key on them and get that stop? Yeah, I mean, I think Jalen did a great job of putting pressure on the ball. Um, you know, you got to give him a lot of credit for, for his defense on that play. Um, and Rashid came in, poked it out, got the steal. So, yeah. Um, not really, um, but you know, I, I give Melo and Rashid a lot of credit for that. You know, they they, they did a great job of, of driving and, and, and finding me on the wing in the corner. Um, you know, and I, I, I was playing with confidence today. Shot felt good. Jake, a year ago, you took one shot in the first <laughs> round, and uh, and then you today you look like you were just looking for the basket the whole game. What's what's the difference between you now and, and back then? Um, more mature, confident player. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to play with, with better pace now. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm playing well. More questions for student athletes? Great decision. All right, we'll dismiss these three and then direct questions to Good coach. Job, guys. Get out of here. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Questions for Coach Turgeon. Uh, Mark, as you guys tried to close the door down the stretch but didn't until the, the very end, are there any symptoms similar in this game to against Nebraska where the same sort of thing happened? No, no. Really wasn't. Um, the difference was we had a couple silly fouls there. If we don't have those fouls, those were tough shots they were taking. Might have been, might have been different. but. Um, we had to play some funny lineups today. Um, that game, we weren't in foul trouble. Um, so, no, nah, it's not a carryover. You know, I'm going to look at the first 36 minutes. It's a really good team. We controlled the whole game until that point. So, uh, with, with serious foul trouble. But uh, hopefully we'll get better. You know, if that opportunity happens again, that we'll protect the lead a little bit better. Uh, Coach Brian McInnes at the Star, advertiser in Hawaii. Uh, your thoughts, if if any, at this point on on playing Hawaii? Had you had a chance to see him at all, at all during the season? You know, I watched him over the break, Christmas break, when they played at Oklahoma. I watched that game; it was a heck of a game. And um, I know their guards can really score, and I know the big kid's really good. And but that's it. I haven't watched anything. I barely watched any of the game today because you know you're trying to stay focused on the task at hand. So. We'll go back. My assistants will get me up to date. But uh, they've had, was that 28 wins for them? That's a school record, right? It's pretty amazing. they got an amazing team and a uh, great win for them. The coach is doing a great job. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to playing them. Uh, Ryan Blasio with the Dimeback. Coach, when Mello and Diamond were on the bench there early in the second half, and uh, Nickens and Lehman caught fire. I mean, what was that? How, how crucial was that given the, your top two scorers are sitting on the bench? Yeah, we were we were a really deep team today. Jalen played well. Jared was terrific. Four for eight from three. And, um, you know, but and then DeMonte was really good for us too. I thought what they really played well was defensively. I thought they guarded well. And then they were able to make shots. But... You know, with those two out, we still had Robert in the game, and we were able to play through Robert, and we had great spacing. Um, we've worked really hard on that. We knew they were going to come double. The guys shared the ball, made extra passes. The key in that stretch was we didn't guard very well, so they kind of hung around. We were, we were shooting the lights out and executing at a high level. It should have been a 20-point game. Instead, it was 14 at the media time. I was like, dang, it seems like we should be up more than this. So give them credit. They, they kept scoring during that stretch, too. Jack Kelly, Sports Illustrated for Kids. Um, Coach, after seeing both Michigan State and Cal lose today, uh, was there anything you said to your players before the game to ensure you didn't lose to a higher seed team as well? Yeah, we don't, we don't ever talk about losing. We talk about winning and advancing. And, and uh, you know, we knew about yesterday's upsets. We've been kind of locked in today. Um, we obviously knew Hawaii beat Cal uh, today. But um, besides that, we were just really locked in. It's hard. It's 
the pressure, it, it, you, you can't describe it, that these kids have to play through. And we were really nervous at the start, and it showed. Um, and then down the stretch a little bit. But uh, it is what it is. I think each game will get a little bit more comfortable. But that's, you know, it's March Madness is what happens. So. Seeing anything different out of Jake right now? He's heating up. Obviously, a crucial part for you guys if you're going to advance is having him shooting well. And so far, it's so good. Yeah, I, I think he said it best. He's much more mature. He's playing with poise. He's playing with a great pace. Um, he, he's guarded well all year. He's played tremendous defense. He's been a great leader. Um, but the last four weeks, he's gotten a lot more aggressive, and he's just so confident in shooting the basketball. And uh, he was terrific today. We needed every point and every defensive play. So I'm happy for him. And uh, you know, he had a chance to leave. He decided to stay. It could have been late first, early second, but. I think he made a great decision. He's a much better player today because of it. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Yeah, perhaps.